Siobhan, let, let me start with you. You have quite a nuanced view on this, don't you? But obviously, you're an MP. You believe your safety has been put at risk be because of these trolls. So, so explain to me how they got to you when you were taking maternity leave, which is something you're obviously yeah. completely entitled to do, and what you think the solution is. Yeah, I mean, so obviously, as exactly as you've been discussing, uh, nutters aren't always online. And, um, and sadly, with the Sir David situation, he was very much uh, not on social media. But what I've experienced since coming into Parliament is that uh, the ability to kind of access us and anybody in the public eye, it's not just, uh, it's not just MPs, the access is, is, is out there. The internet is a bit of a wild west. Twitter in particular is a toxic hellhole it can be. Uh, and given that the, the government is doing so much work uh, with the forthcoming online harmed bill, Quite a lot of the public are looking to us about anonymous abuse as well. Um, um, we know that seven out of ten victims of abuse uh, online um, have suffered uh, at the hands of anonymous trolls. So then, for me, I'm intuitively against banning things. I, I think it's, it's it should be an absolute last resort. So I've been launching a campaign uh, over a year ago uh, to try and give social media's users choice. So my campaign is to say. Um, Require verification. Um, if you can choose to be verified yourself as a social media user, and you can also choose to be only followed by um, verified social media users as well. So, I mean, ultimately, we're never going to completely get rid of uh, abuse, but we believe that that will dramatically reduce the uh, levels of abuse uh, in the social media world. Um, and I think it is a middle way uh, okay. rather than going for a but, but, Mar but Marlon, you say actually we need to go one step further here, don't you, and just ban any anonymous accounts on social media because of the, the sorts of attacks that, that they unleashed on you when you were in the lowest, most dark moment any human being uh, could live through. Yeah, I mean, being a victim to it myself and... Every single day, you know, dealing with these fake accounts, trolling, um, not knowing who's behind these accounts and having to physically check each message I get and comments is worrying because to my mental health, that isn't great. But to people that aren't as strong as me, it's not good. And actually, I did my own investigation. I actually hired investigators to find out who was behind the acid attack threat. And it turned out to be an actual security guard I'd hired previously before to protect me. And clearly he thought that by threatening me online, I would go back and hire him again. So we don't know who's behind these accounts. It's scary, it's dangerous, but we don't actually know who's behind that. And if we're getting a, a ton of abuse daily, that is, is so damaging, but it's actually just not the trolling. It, it gets more than that. It's, you know, them finding out where we, where we live, um, wanting to know every bit of information about us, getting super involved in our lives. It's not just the trolling, it's a lot more than that. It's a lot more in depth um, and it's dangerous. It is, and very often, because I've had these experiences myself, very often the social media companies just will not act, even, by the way, if the police are involved, because their view is that if you're a public figure, you should be subjected to this stuff, or, or not that you should be, but, but that... Uh, they don't want to take away the right of, of the public to make anonymous accusations. But Matthew Lesh, I mean, why on earth should, should someone like Marlon have to put up with that? Why? I mean, how can you justify that? Look, look in the first instance, uh, I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that we're talking about online anonymity following the, the tragic... Um, and I agree with that of, of Sir David Amos. Um, that, that had literally nothing to do with online anonymity. Um, it, it was a, a jihadi attack, and I think this discussion is largely a, a distraction from the central issue. It's a way not to talk about agreed. security. Agreed, and, and we're agreed on that. Um, I, I don't think ending online, online anonymity will make the, the internet a better place. I think there are a lot of genuine reasons that people want to be anonymous online. I'm thinking of the gay kids who aren't out yet to their parents. I'm thinking of, of a woman who's um, trying to hide away from a, an abusive ex-partner. I'm, I'm thinking about uh, dissidents and whistleblowers. <laughs> Uh, people from, from authoritarian countries. You, you don't necessarily have the privilege to identify themselves and connect them uh, to their name. Uh, I, and I, I, at the same time, I, I, obviously, online abuse is, is wrong and immoral, and, and 
what my fellow, fellow panelists have experienced is, is completely unacceptable. I just worry that trying to remove what is a real key building block of free speech and identity. You know, th think about this in the, in the context of, of council culture. A, a lot of things you say these days that are, that are genuine criticism, mm. genuine comment, genuine debate, um, uh, things that were completely acceptable a few years ago can now get you fired. Um, and to be able to express those, those, those opinions politically, you might not necessarily want to put your name to it. I, I saw someone tweet today saying, you know, I'm from Hong Kong. Uh, if, if I put in my full name on Twitter, I couldn't go back to the country I come from and, and see my family because I've been criticising uh, the Chinese Communist Party. There's just so many reasons you, you want to be anonymous online. I, I agree that harassment and abuse are serious issues. I don't think necessarily getting rid of that in the first instance no. it solves the problem. And I understand that, and that's why I have massive issues with it as well. But the problem is, Siobhan, right, all of those points that Matthew Lesh make are very valid. But, but, but the internet giants, these big tech companies, are out of control. It's the Wild West online. And they allow things to be, to be published, and they are effectively publishers, regardless of what they say. They allow things to be published that are against British law. I mean, the tech companies are making money out of us and making money out of us being online. And that's why my proposal isn't to make change. I have a huge amount of respect for Matthew and the Adam Smith Institute. And it's a, it's a really important and fair challenge that he's making. But I think I'll make three, three main points. The first thing, at the moment, the, the abuse and the nastiness that people like Marlin, myself, uh, and no doubt Adam and uh, uh, Matthew and you are receiving is the, one of the greatest impediments to freedom of speech. We are not saying what we think if we think we're about to get death threats or rape threats. And Marlin, I follow you on Instagram. You're a fabulous speaker about baby loss. What you went through is just awful. People are not making their points clear because they're too frightened to do so. So that's step one. So let's think about giving them a choice to have some protection. Step two is that it's absolutely right that there is a good anonymity, but unfortunately that's been abused. And I think the, 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 again, we come back to that choice. There will be journalists and whistleblowers um, that need to have the cloak of anonymity and there will be young people that are exploring uh, their sexuality and a range of other things but again that through my my proposal that that can be uh, that that can be run through and I think the third thing is to say that the online harms bill as it stands didn't even consult about uh, anonymity when we we're going through all the uh, the detailed consultation and even the deep knowledge that the public when they think about online harms and when they think about worrying about their children and their grandkids and whether they should have social media accounts, that the deep knowledge that an anonymous an anonymity gives that kind of disinhib disinhibition uh, to, to give nastiness and all the sort of things that we see, I think it is incumbent on us in Parliament to try and find a way through and require. I mean, I'd love government not to be getting involved in this. This should be the tech companies. This should be a moral but, but they requirement. Won't do it. I but they agree. won't do it, and they won't do it because Marlon. I mean, I've had got a lot of personal experience with this and I'm sorry the big obviously the trolls are revolting but the big tech companies are revolting too yeah. because I know instances in my own life when the police are taking action against threats that have been made against me by trolls but potentially by criminals and even though the police are taking action and even though these people are probably going to even get to court the social media companies will not take down these posts, will they, Marlon? No, I mean, you've got online forums um, that actually promote the online hate, right? And they actually like it. It makes them money. So the more hate you get, the more they're thriving. You have Instagram. They, they thrive off having accounts, um, you know, controversial topics. Without the accounts, there, there's nothing there. And the same is with Twitter as well. And to report a comment or you know, report something nasty on Instagram. I think it needs like what, like 50, 50 people reporting it to even get, get it taken a look at. So it's not actually easy to get rid of stuff. So there we are, you know, I'm there on my own going through these comments myself, monitoring it. But that shouldn't be the case. They should be monitoring this. They should be doing it a lot more closely, but they don't. And, and, and I guess I'll give you the final word, Matthew Lesh. I, I, I guess what I would say to you is, in principle, I agree with everything you say in an ideal world. But how do we deal with these tech giants who just do not want to acknowledge that actually they do have a role to keep society safe?
Look, I, I think we need to be very narrow and specific in our focus. I, I think the tech companies fail in a lot of respects. I think they're too censorious of legitimate speech and they're not quick enough to deal with harassment and abuse. I get worried about pr proposals that, that go too far and push too far against free speech. So you take the online safety bill that not only tries to deal with unlawful speech, but also this very concerning amorphous phrase, legal but harmful speech. That effectively means giving the state the power to force censorship of legal yeah. speech on social media And companies. I agree. But if it's a death threat... Or all, all if, that, it's, yeah. if, it's, it's, if it's a threat of violence of some form, I'm sorry, that is illegal. And, and no matter what they say, they often do not deal with that until the media gets involved and individuals shouldn't have to deal with that. So it's a big issue and I really appreciate all of you having the discussion today. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.